Hey, Mercedes, welcome back to the show. How you doing? Oh, we're, you're muted. Can't hear you. Look at that, there though. You. you missed all the profanity. <laughs> <laughs> so it was good. Hey, Sav, what's up, what's up? <laughs> well, thank, thank, thank you two for not censoring us because your cursing was muted. Oh, isn't that wonderful? And I gave well, credit to the music yesterday, so now you're not going to get noped for that either. You're welcome. Oh, geez. Well, Hi, Sav. The Earth Homes. <sighs> so as a Nebraskan, my favorite thing is all things like this, okay? We are the home of Arbor Day. Our conservation is on point. So when we, like, when you're talking about this stuff, I'm like, my great grandpa was born in a sod house. Let me at you. I'm not, I'm not so, kidding. <laughs> Nebraska, you can, you can grow trees, but you can't smoke trees. We used to be known as a hemp state until the government put a prohibition on hemp products. Just so you know, we traded alcohol for hemp because during alcohol prohibition, our main cash crop was hemp. And then the government came in and was like, no, bad, naughty, because Mexicans and Native Americans smoke it and they wanted to criminalize it. They criminalized crack for the African Americans and weed for everybody else. And then they pushed pills because pharma, you know, history. It's fun. It's all great. Right. It's great. All right. See, <laughs> being I, here today. <laughs> I, know, I, I, don't, I just know Nebraska as the statist state that I'm afraid to drive through after visiting Colorado. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, my God. Do you know what it's like to be a libertarian in Nebraska? Because I'm about to tell you. Um, <laughs> so uh, we're going to get to the history thing first. But right now, our state of Nebraska, our governor hates weed so much. But people don't know or don't remember that his family owns the Cubs. So he has like investments in pharmaceuticals. And we're like not talking about the opiate anything here. We just have pain clinics that they're using to help help people. Like our mayor just went on a, uh, what did he do? He took something and then got on Facebook and made a status about it. So that's what's going on here. Uh, but weed is the devil's lettuce. Our state troopers can't find the millions of people that get kidnapped along I-80 in Nebraska for sex trafficking. But oh God, if you have a pound of weed, they're going to pull you over. Oh yeah, go Google sex trafficking corridors in America and I-80 in Nebraska. I'm in Kearney. I'm surrounded by sex trafficking. Like, I am afraid. I am afraid to drive out of town because I don't want my daughter to get kidnapped. I am afraid to take my daughter out in public. We have moms all over social media for the last few years giving warnings about these people are following me in me in Target. These people are following me to my car. These people are in their cars following me home. People are pretending to be DHHS and going door to door and trying to kidnap children. Like this is bad. North Omaha just had a little Mexican girl stolen. Like our sex trafficking in, in Nebraska, people don't talk about it and it needs to be talked about right now. And we'll get to the other stuff in a second because that's being used too. And I'm going to keep reminding us so I don't get stuck on this because no, well, this uh, is horrible. Yeah. Well, now, I, I mean, I remember reading an article, uh, a, I, I don't know, about a year ago when USA Today did an expose on child sex trafficking in, in the U.S. And... What was surprising to me, and I think a lot of people, was not just how common it is, but but the actual texture of it. You know, we, we go well, sex trafficking. What are they? What are they doing? They got warehouses full of girls. Like, why yeah. don't we find them? Like, how can we not catch yeah. this? Okay. And, it's, and that's like that's not it. It's it's individuals like in with, Furnace with, County. The latest example in Furnace County, a dad had a teenage girl. He was pimping out to his friends down there, and there's several rings down there like that where dads will take their girls to parties. And then you don't have people to address it. And it's kept hush hush, like go Google the Franklin scandal. That's real. Like confirmed, real for Wait, this to me. Thing, this is a thing in Nebraska. Fathers are taking their teenage daughters to pimp them out at parties. Yeah, that's what was happening at Furnace, in Furnace County. His dad was, the dad was pimping out his daughter to his friends. He was letting his friends and ever anybody else just sleep with her. How did he get caught in that case? Uh, undercover? Or in FBI sting? I don't know. 
Yeah, but how I don't okay, know. That, that, but I don't know if they give that out. I don't remember if I read how they caught them. And if I did, I might have blocked it out because I'm a victim, so I selectively block things out because when I was a child during the 90s, I was I was a I was a yeah. Yes. Mhm. Mm yep. That's all I can say. So COVID Segway history. Yeah, no, no. Well, hold on. I want to. I want to. I, I don't want to move on just yet. I apologize. Okay, fine. It's, no, it's fine. <laughs> no, it's but okay. It's beautiful how you can say something like that, and you're obviously at least sufficiently at peace with it to be able to, to discuss it this way. It's more of I came to terms with it, and then I got pregnant, and I had my daughter, and while I was pregnant, you know. Pregnant women are cranky, and but I'm I'm peaceful. So instead of being just belligerently just angry that these things happen to me and realizing that I have a daughter because I really wanted a son, even though they're not protected, it's a little bit easier to protect them. Just that's Nebraska's 20 years behind the rest of the country, y'all. So um yeah, so I was really, really angry, and that's kind of what pushed me forward harder on my path in the Libertarian Party was being pregnant. Because it was before my father-in-law committed suicide. And so while I was pregnant, I realized all of the inequality women have faced for eternity. Because you have a lot of time to think when you're pregnant. And, <laughs> and that really got me fired up because the man, man. <laughs> mm, yes. I'm not going to get too crazy about it. The man. I'm so angry at just everything in the, in the system and how it works and why do I have to be more afraid to have a daughter? Why am I glad my daughter's lighter than I am? Why is my dad glad, or my, glad my daughter's lighter than he is? Why are we having these conversations in 2020? Why am I hearing of KKK being active in my community? Why am I having an increase of sex trafficking in my community? Why is my senator and governor worried about weed over that? Yeah, no, I made the point a number of times about just the insane hypocrisy of law enforcement. And I wish every American knew what I'm about to say and, and had heard some of these stories. But there are police departments where they are actively busting people for cannabis while they have rape test kits that are 30 years backlogged analyzed even yes and you yes. know why you know why because they caught the golden state killer with a dna test that had been sitting in backlog you know why there's a 30-year backlog on because those people are still on the force these people have been on the force these people are the next generation from the 50s that were supposed to make the south rise again because that's what you say as it, and even here i hear that like we have people in power, they blew their cover, and this is what happens when people in power try to retain power. This ideal is a violent, evil ideal, and when violent, evil ideals are cornered, they lash out. So about the nature of sex trafficking being a, a much more individual to individual thing, rather yep. than, like there, there are rings, like you there, said. There's, there's, there, there are people who associate and collaborate but as I understand it, the vast majority of human trafficking in the United States is, you know, one man or a couple sometimes who have kidnapped or got a foster child or two or three at most. And they're and taking they them to hotels yep. and parties. Or and like just at home or selling pictures. And then there's... Um, there is a lot, like, there, the daycare sex trafficking rings in Nebraska are starting to get busted more. So it's like, it's even in daycares and private schools. And then you see the government trying to privatize everything, and then you're like, but, but, like, in Nebraska we have a history of privatization in which children are molested. Like, our boys' town system in Nebraska, because we're so criminalizing here, has been used for sex trafficking. Our foster care system has been used for sex trafficking. We know that, it's come out. They keep it hush hush because it's Nebraska nice. And, and see, this is, a, this is something that's like, it, it, it's not hard, but it's really important for every American uh, to consider this issue and really understand the texture of it. 
Because when people who know this background talk about it like you and I do, where it's it's pedophilia. It is pedophilia. Being empowered by this. Um, you know, it, it, it's a abject failure of government and law enforcement. It's cases of individual abuse. It's multi-generational abuse trickling yeah. down because you can't stop kids from molesting kids. Yeah. And, and, if you, and the adults are doing it, which triggers the cycle. So if you can't get the adults to stop doing it, you can't give the children who are molested guidance to not let them progress down. If we're not saving our children first and then listening to them and loving them and helping them and giving the support that they need to be reasonable adults, we're never going to break the cycle ever, yeah. ever, ever, ever. And that's how we fix it. Yeah. And this is why, and, and, and I mean, Mercedes, cor correct me if I'm wrong here, but as libertarians, we need, uh, we support the legalization of prostitution. We do. So that it can happen out in the open. Yep. And then, you have, the and, then, and then instead, yeah. I've met sex workers in this area who look like 12-year-old girls who are 25. And they have told me they strip so that those pedophiles go to watch her instead of targeting children. She knows why they like her. Do you know how hard it is for her to know what she's doing? She's like a vigilante. <laughs> she's the cutest little girl I've ever seen. If we and, legalize prostitution, then children will stop being abused. Right. And, and the criminalization of prostitution leads to the Johns going, well, I'm already breaking the law. Why would I check this girl's ID and make sure she's 18? Oh, and the, oh, but it's money, though. Do you know how much money they're making? Hi. Hi, Epstein. Hi, Prince Andrew. Hi. I see you. <laughs> we all see you. Yeah. Well, Mercedes, <sighs> take it to Rant. Corona. I, I, I do, I do want to connect this because yeah, there's a there, there are a few things right now that are contributing to this, and one is masks. A little bit, yep. But, but also, you can, you can hide easier. They yeah. can't see you. You have more anonymity. Anonymity. I don't do words. I don't do words. My brain works kind of sometimes when I get just when, when, when you when you do when you say something stupid like that, just think of a stupid <laughs> person like a QAnon magatard, and then you go QAnon -an anonymity. Okay. Okay, A A Ron. There you go. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, COVID. So COVID. <sighs> well, no, but it, I, hold on. I don't. I oh, don't, there's I, a I don't whole big ah. It's, 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 it's not just, increasing it's, not just masks. it's increasing domestic abuse and violence <laughs> it's 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 a bad situation that our government has taken advantage of to make worse yeah. completely at the beginning i was hopeful that we had a chance a chance to end up on the other side of this like everybody else around us a chance to maybe contain it a chance to maybe understand what was going on and not have it being abused and politicized and then they denied and denied and denied and they can't keep it from us because we have the internet. We know what's going on. I have friends all over the world. I know what's happening in their countries. Okay? And I see that happening here. I know the timeline of how things travel in the world because I'm in the business of food service. We have to track transport when you're in manufacturing. I know how long it takes for things to get to America. So I sounded the alarm early. I'm like, guys, pay attention. There's something coming. I don't know what it's going to be. I don't know how it's going to be. It's going to be bad. You need to pay attention right now. And then everything hit the fan. And it came from Portland. We decided it, it ended up New York and Portland first because the transmission rate that they were saying. Because I did nothing for the last year but watch. Seattle? Seattle? The place I've never been to that way. Yeah, and I Seattle, and I am pointing Seattle, west. <laughs> I, the yes. Hot spots. Yeah. yes, and we and because it, I watched everything live, everything live, any live feed I could get, I was getting live feeds interrupted. I was having them disrupted. It was hard to get information. All I did was make masks, because 
I don't want them to see my face. I don't want them to use face identifying software on me when I have drones flying everywhere above my head. Okay? I'm already paranoid about my privacy. Now I have a virus that they're going to try to weaponize to keep us in our homes because I saw what was coming. My grandpa's a Vietnam vet. His biggest fear, and he keeps, and he's told me this a lot, is him seeing tanks rolling down the streets of his hometown. Have your grandpa tell you that. And then see this happen. And it's happening. There are tanks or armored vehicles driving down the streets in America right now because of COVID. I'm not lying. I'm telling the truth. I'm in Nebraska. I see everything. I'm surrounded by the entire country. It takes three days to get from the coast to here. It takes 10 years for the economic recession to get from here, from there, from the coast to here. We're 10 years behind the rest of the country. Not intellectually, but progressively, because we are farmers. We don't need any of that. We're not in big cities. Lincoln and Omaha are not like here. They shut down. They had mask mandates. The governor wanted to sue them. We never shut down in Nebraska for COVID. Our governor listened to us and kept us happy. And now we have a COVID spike. And I'm COVID positive. I wore my mask. I know where I got it because I know where I didn't wear a mask. I know exactly where I got it. And I found out other people there were positive too. There's a COVID bomb that just went off in Kearney. This is bad. Our healthcare system can't support 500 people who need a hospital bed. We can spread it out, but we're the only Walmart within an hour of some places. We're the main city out here. Our city's a tourist city. We're the oasis in the desert. So if you have a rural community you get hit with COVID and you don't have medical infrastructure, what happens? We're not New York, we're not LA. We don't have the medical capacity to save everybody. We don't have the ability to save our old people. I, we have a 56, we have a vet's home here in town. They moved the vet's home from Grand Island to here. We have all of the old veterans in the state here that are living in the home, or one of them. I think there's another home. Like it's important to protect those people because if they get COVID, they will die. If my grandparents get COVID, they will die because my grandma has comorbidities. She will die if I see her right now. And we've had those talks because my grandpa is an army vet and our family is militaristic. And that's why we're not scared of the virus. We see what the government's using it. I've had, this is the third time I've had it. The first time they didn't test me because it was before they allowed testing. I saw what the CDC was saying. My doctors are honest with me. My friends that are in the medical field are honest with me. We talk. We knew what was going on. That's why we were saying wear masks because we need you to at least try to keep your germs to yourself because the government's going to try to use this against you. You test positive. I'm on a list now. Do you believe that the masks are actually effective? I do, because when my husband sneezes, I see it come out. When he's wearing a mask, I only see part of it come out. And my husband is very gross, okay? I'm just going to say that right now. He's very so, gross. I mean, you you <laughs> like, heard of the studies, right, with it, that show that have, wearing a mask, oh, you, like while it does restrain your you, droplet transmission, the overall effect in a population is to increase viral transmission because of a lot of other things that well, go along with wearing a mask. So you need to know your mask hygiene. You can't wear the same mask repeatedly. It's like wearing, you gotta treat your mask like you treat your underwear. You have to, so, you gotta be safe. Because if they weren't effective, doctors wouldn't have worn cloth masks forever and ever and ever until capitalism caught up. If they didn't work, doctors wouldn't wear them. I have a fitted respirator I wore while I was wet welding. Before that, I just had a 3M dust mask. I know the effectiveness of the mask because I know the dirt ring around my face. I use masks in my profession. I know that they are effective. But overall for the population, using them without that conscientiousness is having a worse effect, right? Yep. 
if you give anybody half truths and half knowledges, you're giving them dangerous information because they don't know everything. So they're going to go half cocked out into the world and just, it's like giving a 14 year old keys without ever teaching them how to drive. So it would be better to not have, to not have, to have people not wearing masks It'd than be, just have the government say, everybody wear them, even would, if you don't know how to use it properly. It would be better to have had a competent, truthful government at the beginning. Hey, let's just go back to that. It would have been better for them to say, this is, instead of them saying, hey, don't wear masks, they don't work, because they needed to conserve. The reason why they told everybody that masks don't work is because they wanted to conserve supplies for frontline workers so that they would have them to hand, handle the outbreaks. That way, that's why they made everybody stay home, because they didn't have enough resources and didn't want to tell people and freak them out. And it's because the government didn't want us to have resources because they wanted to start a capitalistic economic boom. More production. Switch production. We can't, we're trying, the government tried to control production in America and it failed. So about getting the virus multiple times, your belief is that the virus mutated enough that your antibodies were no longer relevant to the new version of the virus, is that right? I wouldn't say isn't relevant because the first time I had it, I was very, 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 very sick. I actually documented it all on my Facebook because I thought it was important because I had asthma at the very beginning. They're like, if you have asthma, you're gonna fucking die. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, <laughs> okay? And I'm like, I already knew that if I, I I have asthma and anything could kill me. So I'm like, okay, shit, well, add that to the list of reasons why I don't leave my house. Cause let's be honest, I don't leave my house. Uh, let's just, you know. So, um, yeah. So the first time I was on like, I was on two different rounds of steroids and antibiotics. Each time they were different. The first time was treating per symptom, or the first time was treating per symptom, but different medications that I was on. Right, because antibiotics would be for a bacteria, not a virus. Yeah, and and I didn't get antibiotics right at first. We treated because it affected... Yes. <laughs> yes, I did. I'm good with my health because I don't want to die. But I uh, mentioned that I did have swine flu too. So whatever, we'll get to that someday. Uh, so uh, yeah, I was patient zero in my town. Thanks. Um, so I've already been under quarantine before. So the first time I got sick, I got sick because I was working. Um, it was really, really bad. I was on steroids, um, had all of the symptoms plus bonus symptoms. And they're like, well, you, it's not COVID because you don't fit into our perfectly square box of what we think this is. I'm like, well, then treat me by symptoms because you're a doctor, do your job. So she so did so her job. So <laughs> the steroids were for, for my lung lungs to, to keep my lungs open because I was producing a whole bunch of phlegm. I was having trouble breathing. Um, it felt like I had pneumonia only worse, but because of, God bless America, because I'm asthmatic, um, we always treat based off of symptoms. We do what I need to keep my lungs open and keep me from dying. Okay. First round went good. I was on antibiotics because my lungs hurt. I was fine. We, week goes by and the second wave hits me worse than before. I almost went to the hospital. Um, more different inhalers, a Z pack, and I was better. That is the course of recommendations that they say for COVID at the time. So I have the antibodies, I'm breastfeeding. I already knew I was gonna be okay because my friend's in Italy and she's giving me all the know-how because I'm Italian doctors. They are good doctors. If you want a doctor, go to Italy. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> but the know, northern part. Like fucked up pretty bad recently. The northern, the northern part, not the poor southern part, okay? It's an elitist country still, you gotta remember. Rome and all. Um, so, god damn, that's really true though. Uh, so, COVID. Um, I lost so your track. Second, your second and third experiences were not were as, were more mild. I still had symptoms. They are different. They are following along hay fever. And I get horrible hay fever. And that's what I thought I had. And then I lost my sense of smell and my sense of taste. And then I'm like, fuck but i have had that happen with colds prior that's why they're all like be scared be scared it's lots of blah, 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 blah. okay cool is it covid or is it a normal cold is it the flu is it hay fever i'm gonna die anyway whatever we're all gonna die 
So, uh, got tested finally. Met Spike, that test came back negative. Got tested again because they said there was a glitch in the system. Came back positive. So, I'm gonna treat it as a positive case because I have been sick. I did have symptoms. It was just like the first time. Only not as bad, because I'm not dead. But. So, so there's another explanation for this though, Mercedes, because it's the natural course Faulty of- the tests. Well, well, yeah, there's that too. <laughs> uh, no, no. But, but, you know, assuming that, that it's still COVID, although I don't know at what point you stop calling it COVID, but the natural course of viral evolution mm -hmm. is for them to become less severe and, and less this, deadly over time as yep. they mutate. And that is because exactly what is happening with this virus. So you think that there are a few versions going around and the, the, that as it goes, it's getting milder? Um, actually, it, um, I don't know where the article is, but I've been keeping up on like the actual science journals I finally found where all the doctors talk online. It's been great. Anyway, um, <clears throat> um, <laughs> yes, it is mutating. I don't know, last I checked, which was months ago, there were 30 strains, which now if you do the math, it, there's like millions. So it's just, it depends on the strain you get. It depends your comorbidities. It's a virus. The way that they're labeling COVID deaths, I think they're, I, in my personal, non-official, doctoral, just a crazy lady on the internet opinion, important to mention that, I think they're listing the COVID, the deaths as COVID because the comorbidity wasn't going to kill them then anyway. One. Two, we need to track which illnesses are killing people when they get COVID. We have to track everybody who's COVID positive so that we know where it's at in our population. Because if we track where the COVID deaths are, then we know where the most COVID virus is. Because like here in rural Nebraska, if everybody gets it at once and we have a COVID bomb go off, our health care system fails and now we're in a war zone. I don't want a war zone. I don't want my friends to go through that. Okay? I don't. So... What would your response have been? Let me ask you the question that I used to get a lot. If you were president when this happened, what would be the ideal policy from government for the whole country? Well, not, uh, oh God bless America. So actually, this is the part I hate admitting because <laughs> I'm a libertarian and I believe the state should have all the rights. And I believe that my state handled it very, 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 very well. I hate the governor. I really hate the governor, but he didn't lock us down. Right at the beginning, he said, this is the facts, this is the data, this is what's going on. They didn't lie to us. National news, they lied. They big lied. Big, big. I saw, so, and it was funny because Nebraska would do their press conference and then Washington, D.C. would do their press conference. So that's good dimension right there, okay? Yeah. So Nebraska has UNMC where we, and we get Ebola patients in Nebraska. Like my hospitals, I think, said it has a negative flow air room in, in my town because we have a college too. So we know how to control infectious diseases. So what we did was implement just, man, not mandates, just guidelines. This is what you need to do, six feet apart, wear a mask. If you can't wear a mask, don't go out. If you can go out, social distance. If you can't do your job in social distance, don't do it. So we shut down anything you couldn't social distance. So like grocery stores were um, still open, restaurants were still open. Um, just basic necessities, like the bars and hair salons were pretty much the only things that closed. Everything else continued on, but safely. That's what we did. If you are at risk, you stay home. We've always done that, though, here. We just, intellectually, Nebraska is pretty smart. And so they, the state said, with glee, dude, I don't know who this dude who spoke at the beginning is anymore, but he definitely, um, with glee, said, we're going to leave all the decisions on your mandates down to the health districts, mayors, and um, superintendents. And that's what they did. And that's how they're doing it. We are locally controlled by our health districts and our cities and our schools so it's based on schools and children and health and knowledge and that's the way it should have been everywhere but it wasn't there and that's when i say nebraska didn't do what the rest of the country means i mean we didn't do that so now yeah. but now so, we have a spike because people aren't doing that anymore 
Okay, That's so I, why. I, just, I, 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 it's awesome that, you know, Nebraska has that advantage, but you are still part of the rest of the national economy. We, uh, well, we can't go down. We make all the food. Us, me and CJ, South Dakota, Kansas, Texas, Oklahoma, we are the grain belt. We're the, we are who feeds the entire world. If like we had meat packing plants almost shut down because everybody got COVID all at once. I'm in between two hot spots. What happens when you can't produce food? And it's because they didn't do anything. They didn't tell their workers anything. They told them they could work with COVID. We had a senator whose dad died because he works, he got COVID. But yeah, I think there's there's yeah. kind of a limit to how long they can let this go because eventually the food supply chains and the overwhelming demand at food banks is going to start leading to widespread hunger. But I want to bring this back for just a second to, uh, to to the child and sex trafficking issue because it all comes around you know, because people are desperate right now, are they not? They. We have a problem. Now, like, okay, so. Pick your daughter or you're both homeless? What? Pimp your daughter or you're both homeless? Seems like a situation that a lot of people might be finding themselves in. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, what are you, oh my God. So as a community, we came together for food, but our senator is a landlord, okay? He's a slumlord. People are getting evicted. People who didn't understand their rights and didn't understand what was going on and didn't understand what was happening because the information's not been clear. They're losing their homes because their landlords are like, we need $30,000 right now. Because of the person I'm running against, mind you. He's part of the problem. We got a drink swamp. All right, Mercedes. Uh, Let your next guest come on, please. Yeah, Tina's, Tina's waiting up. But tell us before you go, what's your website, dear? It is votemercedes.com. And that's Mercedes had... spelled the really messed up way. Mercadize. Uh, my mom was 16 when she had baby nice. <laughs> All right. Beautiful. Thank yep, you so, so much for joining us, Mercedes. And, thank and you. And your, oh, your courage in telling the story. Yeah. Anytime you need a filler, let me go. Uh, you know. Okay, bye. <laughs>